Yo, 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 welcome to another episode of Necessary Smoke. I'm your host, Oye Plo, aka Big Motion, and I'm here with a very, 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 very special guest, man. This man is campaigning real strong right now, and we behind him 100%. We got Mike Glantz Jr. in here, man. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? Nothing, nothing, man. Nothing much. It's a very big pleasure to have you here with us here at Necessary Smoke, and, and we finna get into the smoke, man. We finna get into all this, what you got going on. Right. And everything right. that's right coming forth in the future. For us and District 75. Absolutely. We appreciate you for having me. I appreciate you, uh, team on for, for joining me. And I just appreciate being here. Yes, yes. Um, so first, we want to kick it off and know exactly where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, uh, born and raised. Where are you from? Born, uh, born in Frankfurt, Germany. Mm-hmm. You know, born in, uh, my parents were military, baby. Uh, military. Uh, so I was a military brat, then uh, came back to Georgia. I've been in Georgia uh, my entire life. I grew up uh, from everywhere from Rome, Georgia, to Decatur, Georgia, to uh, uh, Clayton County, to Henry County, Kyle County. So I lived all over the state of Georgia pretty much, but I hell and grew up in, in between Decatur and Clayton County. Um, would you moving around from place to place, did that help you? Uh with relationships like meeting people here, here, here. Absolutely, because you know how uh, we know a lot of people that they'll stay on that one block right, right. they right. grew up being, and you don't know if they, because you don't know if you want to take them downtown, they exactly. might not know how to act. So, uh, being moving around, being on a different side of town, for one, it helped me learn the city mm-hmm. and learn what the city got to offer and the resources that we got in different places. But like you said, there's different people on different side of town. You got. Uh, Asian people and a lot of uh, Hispanic people in Gwinnett and Cobb and uh-huh. a lot of black people on the south side. Right. You got, uh, white people everywhere. You got different nationalities within those. So it gives you an opportunity to just see what other parts of the city got to offer and it don't restrict you. So yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for that. That's great. I was looking at your uh, some of your work, man, and you do a lot of stuff and you have done a lot of stuff. Still doing a lot of stuff. I mean, from... from uh, uh, organizing campaigns to, you know, executive, you know what I mean? Like, like, what got you into this field, like, as a child? Like, take us there to your beginning of this. Well, I mean, it, it take us to a previous conversation we just had, of, uh, and it's probably why I lost a lot of arguments and relationships, because I'm not a good stat keeper. Mm-hmm. I don't take stats good. So, uh, and that also translates over to some of the things that you done did in your life, because you'll forget. I forgot. I, I, I was uh, campaigning two years ago, and one of the ladies that worked really hard on me on the first campaign, she was like, uh, I got uh, uh, some of the kids that you helped. He's going to law school. And I'm like, wow. You know, I forgot that I used to hire so many young men and young women just right. to knock on doors, running political campaigns, uh, learning about community advocacy. And just taking them out of that moment that they may not have had a chance to and put them in a different element, showing them how this affects you too. So uh, just not, uh, I think staying in focus and not sitting back trying to, I guess, harken on everything I've done, mm-hmm. it makes me want to keep doing it. Man. I don't work for governors or governor of New York, governor, United States senators. I used to sell insurance when I was 17 in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how I ended up on that, but it didn't work out. And I ended up back on the Greyhound bus in Atlanta. So I did so many things in my life that now uh, my focal point is to just try to ensure that young men and young women know that it's another direction. Uh, not necessarily that I was going a bad direction, but show them the opportunities and resources that are in and around our community. It's beautiful. How to tap into it. Uh, it seems to me like um, everything that you have been involved with up until this point has been getting you ready for what you got going on now, what you what you what you planning to do now, which is uh you running for Georgia State Legislative District seventy five. Yes sir. Um the seat that's currently held by your father. It was my father. Was, he was, he was held by your father. Yeah, he for seventeen years. Seventeen years, man. He had that seat for a long time. So I was that growing up as the son of a person that's interested in getting into politics. Well, it was it it is interesting because when I was young, I wanted to be a lawyer mm-hmm. because I wanted I just liked the debate and things like that. I thought I was good at it. But growing up in a situation and uh, environment that I was in, I grew up in a single parent household. So mm-hmm. uh, my parents were divorced young, but um, you know, we we uh we didn't have all the opportunities and resources. And so 
I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a basketball player. I wanted to be something important. Mm -hmm. I knew I just didn't want to be a regular person. And I felt that way from the beginning. And so I always made sure that I didn't want to get myself in trouble. I didn't want to turn to because I held myself accountable along with the village that I, I had around me, my grandparents, my parents, mm -hmm. my principal, my library. I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want to disappoint people. So it made me work hard along just trying to achieve goals and get to a certain point. And so now my objective is to try to open up the door politically for everybody who wants it, you know, and try to get them to understand it. And well, I remember so, so many times with my dad being uh, elected, I just walked through the one point, one time it was a real, uh, it was a whole line of high schoolers that were waiting to go through the medical techs at the Capitol. And uh, I remember it was the day I was coming to work. And I had my badges and everything on. So I was able to walk right around them. It was like, go ahead, Mr. Glenn. And when I got on the other side, and I saw all those kids looking at me like, who this young black man walking yeah. through this uh, uh, metal detector walking around? And when I got on the other side, I had a surreal moment myself because I was standing in the Capitol Rotunda and I was just looking up like, look at what God has given me access to this, opportunities. I remember walking, riding the water, going past the Gold Dome and never having an opportunity in. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in there. And so now that I'm in here, I got to make sure that there's more people like me know that they can come in here and they'll be mm -hmm. successful. So that's what that's what drives me. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Uh, I was looking at a few of the statistics for District 75 compared to a, to a lot of them, you know what I mean? And uh, it's not too much crime out there, you know what I mean? It's not too much. Uh, the schools are doing pretty well, you know what I mean? Uh, well, we, we as had, far as I can see, we had a couple of hiccups. You know, we had, yeah, there's a lot we're going to get into. Tell, yeah, us yeah, about, we, tell us about the hiccup. Well, the, the actual hiccup turned out to be the better. That's one of the uh, parts of my dad's legislation. Like, uh, I think um, 2000, uh, I can't remember the exact year, but Clayton County lost their accreditation. Mm. Clayton County lost their accreditation. That was the second school system in the United States of America to lose their accreditation in 50 years. So that ain't no school worse than Memphis, the whole United Chicago, States. any of these other cities, inner cities that have, you know, have had trouble in the school system, haven't lost their accreditation. Right. Clayton County Schools lost their accreditation. What that does is that hurt the community bad because if I'm a person who put my kid in high school for four years and I know that when they graduate, they're not going to be able to use this diploma to a college accept them, mm. that's bad. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up and I'm gonna go to the next thing, smoke in the next county where I can get those my kids can get those credits and they can be successful. Those things like that hurt the county. Right. But thank God for legislators like my dad and other people that got on board. They helped Clayton County get their accreditation back. And when that is uh they got the accreditation back, it started to restore faith and and build rebuild the school system and the education system. And unfortunately uh, all the good stuff that you do sometimes is not reported, mm. but the bad stuff is going to be more polarizing because that's an opportunity for people to tear something down. So we're all about resurgence and being a phoenix coming up out, kind of like Atlanta uh, right. theme, being a phoenix, want to come up out that fire, out those ashes, and show that what we're really made of. And I and I believe in the Southern Crescent. I believe in Clay County. I believe in everything and every individual out there that if we want to take an opportunity and a chance, that we would be making us making something of ourselves. But it's got to be people got to want to take that chance. Got to want to take that chance. Lead them to water. You can't make I see you. Them. I see you mean a lot on uh, the economy. You know what I mean, is that is that the focal point of your campaign? Uh, fixing the creating jobs out right there, or, or like what is what's the focal point of your campaign? Well, see, the, here's the thing. As a legislator, I can't create no jobs. Mm. But as a legislator. I can create the environment for that's conducive for that. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, one, of the, what you mean. one of the things that I uh that that's it's unique to my campaign, uh, and it's coming from an experience of me. I was in high school dropout, dropped out of high school at 11th grade. I don't know why I dropped out of high school at 11th grade, because you're almost there. Oh, okay. But I do know why. I didn't have a rock college. I knew I couldn't afford to go to college. I didn't have the best grades. So I was already stifled mentally in mm -hmm. terms of what I could do. And I think I just lost my edge uh, uh, in high school. Thank God I went back, got my diploma, got my degrees, and uh, untraditionally and un, uh, in a way that 
helped me realize that some of the things that were working for us in the state of Georgia back then were like the technical school. I remember we were classified in college prep, college prep advanced, and tech prep. I was in tech prep. Mm -hmm. I felt bad because I was in tech prep because tech prep was looked at as the kids, let me get them over there and get a trade. Right. One thing that they were treat, teaching me in tech prep was media production. Uh -huh. Media production is one of the biggest industries in our in our world these days. They were teaching me media production and teaching me other things, uh, robotics, engineering things. Things that people are making a ton of money now. And these are things that were procured in me as a young man that had I stayed on it, I would have been super successful right. in right. it. And so now that brings me to the forefront of how do we make this environment more conducive for growth between the industries and our education system and our young men and young women. Mm -hmm. And so I have a plan that's unique to my campaign to where we are creating those public-private partnerships geographically specific. So I'm not asking a company that's on the south side in Clayton County to support the schools on the north side of Fulton County. Right. I'm asking an industry to get on board and partner. And, and I, I create an environment for a public-private partnership for a geographically specific industry that now is helping somebody within that 15, 10 mile radius of wherever they made their investment. So if I went and built a 5 million square foot facility, uh -huh. I'm not planning on staying there for two years. I plan on being there for the next 20 to 30 years. So I'm going to be there and I will see this community change. But so often do we have industries that are in and around us. Uh, just when I was uh, living in South Fulton, you ride down Fulton Industrial, you're looking at the map, you see all these different companies around you. You don't know. You're like, Hey, where you going? Hey, bro, uh, I, I just passed the 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 uh, the, the, blue, the blue warehouse. Yeah, I just passed yeah, this. Yeah. I just passed that. Never identifying that these are people that make all the bleach that we all use. These are the people that do that. So they get out there. I'm passing the engineer. So we have not so long. We have so long been disconnected from the industries around us. I want to bring it to the forefront from a educational and career development standpoint. So instead of you spending four years in Spanish, or I mean, I don't want to say Spanish, say four years in an elective that you may or may not use, then if we can start creating those clubs at quantum physics, <laughs> you ain't going to be a, a, a physician, I mean, a, a, a whatever the quantum a rocket physics, science. A rocket science. So you have an industry that is making, producing robotics part, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you're one of those kids that was probably kind of similar to me, but had I got buckled down and had this as an elective in my class, now instead of me spending four to six years learning something I may or may not use, I'm spending four to six years and I'm learning this. This is being taught as a subject. Yeah. And now when I get to the 12th grade and I graduate, this company is sitting right there like, hey, we have a job for you. What this does is it grows careers, it creates retention, lowers recidivism rate. Uh, now we ain't got to keep spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on the on the Department of Correction yeah. without rehabilitating, right? Now we can start actually probably partnering with them to help bring some of those young men and young women that are coming out of prison, reintroducing them back into society with career possibilities, opposed to me just going to, to the warehouse and say, let me get a, a, a packing job. And there's no process for me to be growth. There's no process for growth in, right. inside this. You know? Can can legislators implement rules in school? I mean, like, no, 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 no. Like, can laws, can laws for school be passed through legislation? Like, uh, take quantum physics out and put these in. Well, of or course. Take, you know I what I mean? mean? You, you see, um, what's going on right now in America with critical race theory. Mm -hmm. Things are being redacted from the educational system because it may show the ugly side of America or may show the ugly side of slavery or whatever. That's why they took black history out. And, and, and nothing happens within the education system without legislation. So again, you create the environment. No, so don't get, people don't need that, that, that's why people like me, I feel like need to be in office because I've lived on all sides of the track. Right. And when I say all sides of the track, it means that I grew up disenfranchised. I grew up poor. I grew up uh, in situations that, you know, they counted you out, period, just because of where you came from. 
And then I and then I also had opportunities where I was among around an abundance of, abundance of resources. Oh. And so, but you gotta have people that can relate and understand for real, for real, on what it feel like to have to plug up electricity at a neighbor's house or how to you gotta uh, I bet you on when I, I had to take baths uh in the tub with the water on filling up the boiler. What? So you ain't got but this much bad water. Then <laughs> you know how to make it work. But make these are work. the things that make you appreciate um those periods of life, you know, it was bad then, but it makes you wow, appreciate so it now. So now I take a cold. Yeah, I see, like, well, say, or, or a burger. Yeah, you're going to be cold. Yeah, take a cold. But these are things that we went through that normally our legislators haven't gone through. Uh -huh. And if they haven't gone through that, how you know who to advocate for? How do right. you know how far down low uh -huh. that we got to go? Uh -huh. How do you know that because you allocated this money for schools, that these schools or these classrooms really don't have that much more in there. That classroom, you that, and, and you won't know because the teachers are actually taking that money out of their pocket. And the teachers ain't making nothing out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, but they're taking their, they're there because they're willing to Sorry. take that salary and they also want their kids to be successful. They don't want their kids not to be successful. Right. And so they're doing like above and beyond. I remember one of the pieces of legislation that I had dealt with back in the day. I know we still on education, but uh, I was a PTA president for my oldest daughter's school in this about 2007, 2008. And um, at the time, the Georgia Lottery Program uh, couldn't do any outside solicitations, any private part public private partnerships, because they were getting money from the lottery. Mm -hmm. But the lottery was only allocating a certain amount of funds, and it wasn't over and exceeding what they really needed in the classroom. Right. So me being the PTA president, because I had some money in my bank account from PTA fundraisers, everybody was like, hey, we need money, we need money, we need money. And I was like, well, we got to figure out something else. Y'all can't just be leaning on the PTA for it just then, and we deplete PTA's resources. Right. So uh, I went back and I was talking to my dad. He was in the legislature at the time. I was like, dad, this is not fair. I went down the street uh, to a liquor store. I was like, hey, man, you know, like, Y'all should donate something to the school. Not knowing it was illegal for you to donate to the program at the time, but at the time, we were in a tough time in DeKalb County uh, to where the DeKalb County took the pre-K money that was allocated for field trips for every student to go on field trips, and they decided to pay teacher salaries uh -huh. because they had a budget cut. So the only ones that suffered were the kids that could not leave the classroom for outside experiences. So they left it up to the PTA trying to pay for the bus and this, that, and the third. So I had to get with my dad to come up with some legislation that created to uh, to where the anybody, the Georgia pre-K program recipients could go out and solicit private partnerships with people to help them support the program. So yeah, you might have made sure that the classroom lights are on, but we need tissue. We need this. We need extra supplies and things like that. So that helped that. And so that was one of those positive things yeah. that, that you didn't see when you created a program that as the program got going, you knew you needed to tweak it a little bit. And so that as a legislator, you're able to go into things. And I'm going to tell you, well, all legislation should come from the community. If right. you all are in the right. community, right. we're going down there as a representative of the community. So you should be able to tell me what's going on and yeah. you identify with how to be able to fix that or whatever. If it's something already on the ballot, Mm -hmm. I mean, on the on the docket, or if it's something already in some committee, and it's also important to know what these people do. Mm -hmm. Don't go up to the your legislator and say, "Hey, uh, I'm having trouble with getting my cat out of the tree." That's a fireman's job. That's or probably the I see cat catcher, or or I hey, you, that and that's important because now you know who to call. Mm -hmm. And now if you got a zoning issue, you know to call somebody on the zoning board. If you have a a legislative law issue, you know, that you can go down and contact your legislature. And that's something that we struggle with in the black community because we don't know who's in office. So everybody like, getting shot. Doing what? Everybody getting you blamed. Know we don't know that the mayor got a separate job from the legislator and the legislator got a separate job from the city councilman. We don't know that. And the police play a role in all of this. You know what I mean? And, and they at the bottom. Yeah. We didn't know for years that when you say a police chief is chosen, yeah, that might be right. Or a school superintendent is chosen, yeah, that might be right. But there's a board that got voted in that hired them. So even go back and look at uh, Ferguson. Hold board. on, I think you need to repeat that. There's a board that got elected that hires them. 
So it's a board that was elected to elect the. Well, they were elected to hire that person. Like yeah. the school board is going to hire the, stu- the superintendent. Right. The uh, city council is going to hire the police chief. Right. And so, if you look at a city like Ferguson, Missouri, right? Ferguson, Missouri, and I, I know we're in another state, but Ferguson, Missouri, had an all-white city council, uh-huh. but they had a majority black population. Right. Their city council, quote unquote, was. I guess in a, it kind of seemed like they were racist, but that led on down and bled into the police department because who they chose to lead the police department. Right. So that's where we got to know where our political power and leverage comes into play. So instead of you complaining about the police and complaining about this, find out who they work for, how they got in their position, and what's their qualification. That's what the black and black, because it's real complicated to us to even think about. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it's real... Like, when we started even trying to fathom what's going on in on Capitol Hill or what's going on in City Hall, it's like, man, it's too much. We don't even want to... I'm going to tell you something, too. It's though. really not that much, though. You see what it's I'm not, but there are things and structures that create optical challenges. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you ride around the Capitol now, right, since the... I think it was the... 2020 um, riots or whatever they, they said we had. They got this big iron steel gate around the Capitol now. They got all these barriers and everything now. Mm-hmm. One would think, like, boy, I can't go in there. They don't want me in there. I got to go through this. They going to run my name. Right, right, right. That's right, the right. people's house. Right. That's the state house. Right. That's belong to us. We right. taxes on that. We don't know the power of the people. But that's because I told you those optical challenges. Mm-hmm. Maybe those gates were put up and made people think that they, mm-hmm. they get up. You remember what C. Lo said back in the day? I don't know if these gates were put up to, pe- to keep we crying are, out or to keep it, crying in. Or, uh, keep, what did he keep say? Us in, keep, keep us crying in or keep crying out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the truth. And we got to be able to jump over these hurdles and these obstacle these optical challenges and be able to go straight at these issues and problems and stuff. you face obstacles. I mean like as far face. as I, cause I know this not your first campaign. I know this is not your first time running for office. You know what I mean? Uh I think you ran in eighteen and twenty two. Yes sir. You know what I mean? So would you keep running and this your third they say third time to join as a matter of fact. Man. But would you running and you knowing uh, what's on your heart, and you knowing what you up against, and you knowing what you running for. Have you ever experienced gatekeeping and people trying to block you, or you know what I mean, stuff like that? Do stuff like that happen, and it that far up the top? They happen in politics all day, and mm-hmm. the, the worst thing is uh, people throw their rock, throw rocks and hide their hands. So you can't sound aggressive. You don't know who do it. Yeah, and so even with this, uh, uh, this. Third time, it's probably maybe my last time. I did say that the second time, but I mean, I, it was 2018, then 2022, and then now 2024. And so it's one thing about when you commit to something and it's hurtful when you don't, when you're not successful. Mm-hmm. But that's what people depend on what you call success. So depending on my story, mm-hmm. me being on the ballot is a success. Yeah. And then Going on the ballot again is it's determination and mm-hmm. success. And going on the ballot again is why he won't quit. You know, he won't quit. But it's still a certain thing inside of me that says I owe my community back based on me being spared or the mercy that I've been shown right. and the patience and the opportunity and everybody that helped me. And so we make challenges all the time because just like I told you that, I'm sacrificing myself up. And if you don't win an election, it's almost like you want to be mad at the voters. Mm. I remember one time, 2018, I did not win that election. And I was asked to be the keynote speaker at elementary school the next day. And I went to do that. Damn, I'm kidding. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, this is what I said. I, was, I went to do the, uh, the, the commencement speech. I was so distracted. I don't even know how I got up there. I think I had wrote some stuff down, but I was so, I was feeling so defeated. Yeah. Because I felt like I was defeated because I wasn't successful. And I'm not, no, sometimes it's not your time. Sometimes you got to wait your turn and you got to keep putting the work. And so um, I remember looking out in the crowd. It was wall to wall packed. You know how people go when their kids perform. They were, damn, they're like this. Yeah. I want to see my kids sing. I don't care what the PTA means. I want to see them sing. And um, 
I was looking at those parents like, where was y'all at when it was time to go in the polls? I was up, nah, this is why they say it. I, was saying, I think I was thinking it in my head and I was trying not to say it. <laughs> But I was upset. Yeah. I was upset because I was disappointed because all these people out here, they, they, yeah, they, they didn't come to the poll. I mean, they didn't, I didn't win the election. So I was upset and I was defeated. But it took me to understand the bigger picture to get back up and to want to get back out there and not want to give up. And, and it, it's also your support system. You know, I call these guys or, or call Terry or somebody and say, I don't know what you they believe, they have a different level of belief in you. Mm-hmm. You got that goes into what you were talking about what we were talking about earlier. We believe in ourselves, but there are other people that believe in you too. Mm-hmm. And when other people believe in you, that's like gas in the tank sometimes right. because you don't want to disappoint them. Or when you understand your role in our circles of life, mm-hmm. you understand that this might be your purpose to grow. Right. And so I I mean, I don't want to say my purpose of community. It's contingent on me getting in office because it's not, you know, because we ultimately have been doing the work anyway. Mm-hmm. But I think that one of the best ways that we can change things is by getting in position. Uh, and one of the slogans that I shared sure. in 2022 was you either on the menu or you got a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. And right now, we definitely need seats at the table because people like you who they'll say, hey, you, you know, uh, 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 have you done this or what have you been into? Uh, mm-hmm. and, and they'll say, you don't get a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. But somebody like me, will provide you a seat at the table because I know how instrumental it is for you to be at the table because I'm not going to be a thing. Uh-huh. Comedians, I remember Eddie Murphy say his comedy was getting bad. He would go back to the streets and tap into the streets to get his comedy. Uh-huh. That's the same way with the issues. Right. We ain't fighting issues just for the rich. We fighting issues for the poor, too. Uh-huh. The disenfranchised are unheard of. They counted out. That's what we fighting issues for. Um, I figured, I looked around, man, and, and this relates to what you just were saying. A lot of people that's representing these places are not or haven't been living in these places. Like uh, the, a lot of city councilmen. Now you just gonna use it now. A lot of city councilmen around the United States represent districts and represent places. I'm sure in legislation is like this that they never lived and they never been and they don't have a relationship with the people. And they never been to the schools. How you feel about that? Oh, uh, I, I I think that if you're gonna represent people, that you gotta know them. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's simple as that. Mm-hmm. I can't get represented if I don't know. And uh, I know that there are some laws. Well, in the state, within the House of Representatives, we have to live in our district for a year before we can qualify to be on the ballot. Same way with the Senate, and uh, in the as a governor, you can live anywhere in the state. Um, as a United States congressman. I could live somewhere else and represent somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So there are loopholes in the mix. If you don't know, you don't know. But how can we effectively represent an area that we don't know? Mm-hmm. And so even with, uh, with 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 me, and I used to live in Clayton County 13 years ago, and I moved back to Fulton County. Mm-hmm. But when I moved back to Clayton County, I had to take my time and go back and, and get reacclimated with the community and reacclimated with the streets and and the roads and the bridges because now when I'm sitting in front of these meetings or these people and they're mad about or they're upset or passionate about things that are actually going on in their community, I'm like, I don't know nothing about what's going on. Right. Then I can't speak to their understanding. Uh-huh. But I have to be able to empathize with them so I need to know. And so I think it's important for people that represent areas to know their district. The city of uh, Jonesboro District 75, do they have do you all have, uh, y'all got a mayor out there? Yeah, there's a mayor of Jonesboro, but see, where I represent is the unincorporated area of Jonesboro. That's all I'm going to say. That's kind of more in the area of we're dealing with more county services. Mm-hmm. I only have a small, small portion of the city of Jonesboro, but the unincorporated area of Clayton County, which is still Jonesboro, Georgia, right. is what I, and that's actually where a lot of residents live. A lot so, of so you'll be down like the city hall? And uh, uh, places like that, and people can come to you or email you well, with issues. Like, how do how do it go uh, in your position? Like, how do you connect with people in your position? Like, how can people do they come to you with complaints or is you it change of command? Or when you're you, in office, yeah, you're, like, when you're about to be in office. Oh, we're speaking that to exist. Well, when right you're in now, office, yeah. Uh, 
There are several ways you can get in touch with people. You can get in touch with them, uh, the Capitol office. And you can get in touch with them. Uh, see, what I want to do is I'm going to have, uh, well, everybody should and everybody, most people do, is constituent service. Mm -hmm. So just because I'm at the Capitol, I want to make sure that I got somebody addressing every situation and concern for my constituents, for my voters. So I need to have somebody still tap into that so we can create that line of communication. Uh, and, and even when I was running 2022, 20, uh, I used to say, uh, I think I, I had cards, I said, I ain't changing my number. I'm giving everybody my number now. Yeah. And well, I still, right. yeah, that's a, that's a yeah, I still get calls now uh, on that campaign line, like, is this you? Yeah. And then, but the, the, the best thing about it is, like when I'm doing phone banking, or when I'm canvassing and I actually talk to people, they excited about that. Right. They like that. They want to know that that person that is their representative is relatable and, and he can talk to them. Right. I mean, we did a Martin Luther King parade uh, this past week in Jonesboro, and I swear I touched every hand on the right side of the foot. <laughs> and there was a lot of people because they wanted to see the hands. <laughs> they come out there and in. But I made sure I took advantage of that. And what I seen just from the sheer reactions of people um, not only I smell good, so I want to make sure I smell good, but when you touch people's hand, when people think you're somebody important and they know you to be somebody important or somebody that does things for them, then they just want that personal connection. Mm -hmm. And so I know what it felt like when President Obama used to go through. I know I ain't no President Obama, but right. just to see people see people that they see on TV or that right. they see somewhere else in, in different light and they don't get to contact with them. Is important to them. Mm -hmm. And so any opportunity that I get once I'm elected is to make contact with the ground and the people, I'm gonna take because that's why I'm more comfortable. I'm not, not comfortable, right? You know, boxed up somewhere. Uh right here, right now, I'm about to ask you to help me and the people understand the positions in this like uh like from start from the mayor. Oh uh, no, you ain't gotta start from the mayor. Who over the mayor? Nobody over the mayor. Okay. Uh, but you have what you call jurisdictions. You know what I'm saying? So in my case, I have I would have a, the governor. And uh, you remember when they taught us back in the day about the different branches of government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm more I'm in the um legislative branch. Right. Legislative branch is set up the same way like the United States legislative mm -hmm. branch. You got the governor who is executive, uh, and then you got the House of Congress, upper house, lower house. Uh, the Senate is the upper house, lower house is the house. But the thing is with those is one can't work without the other. Mm -hmm. Anything that do with money in the state of Georgia, any financial bills, any financial legislation, always starts in the house. Mm -hmm. Always starts in the house. The budget, how much money everybody getting, whatever, and it the, always starts in the House of Representatives. And the House of Representatives is in Washington, D.C.? No, no, no. The House of Representatives is what I'm running for. Okay, no, 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 no. So I'm thinking about the House that be. I'm thinking about the Senate House. Well, no, see, this is what you got. This is what you got. You got the United, you got the United States President. Okay. And yeah, break down the whole equivalency of black people because we don't know. I got you. The United States President's equivalency would be the same as a governor. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about the United States being a state. Then you got, uh, well, in, in the United States is different. You got a little bit different cabinet, but he has like the Secretary of State, the, I mean, the Vice President, Secretary of State, the Speaker of the House. Right. Speaker of the House is the person who is the boss in the House of Representatives. Okay. So the Speaker of the House okay. is usually the fourth uh, most powerful person politically in the state right. or in the country mm -hmm. uh, because they control Congress. Mm -hmm. And if you control Congress, you control laws. Presidents and governors can't do nothing without Congress. Right. They can they have a few abilities that they can do, but they mainly need Congress for the big things. You need Congress if you want to act with war. You need Congress if you want to move, if you want to not shut the government down. But because people just don't know that the president really controls the military. Well, it, he does to an extent, but he or she would have to go through Congress. And so I like mean, I that's what I was saying. Congress and the Senate really control the country. They they, the they do. really control military. Every and, and, and every people like But he you still can't do nothing without that. Without that. And so that's oh, how our they, structure they is they set up. Everything is works together. Mm -hmm. Like even and let's break it down to Georgia. You got the governor, lieutenant governor, uh secretary of state, 
Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House is the guy that is over with the House of Representatives. The President of the Senate or the person who's usually over the Senate in the United States government is the Vice President. Mm -hmm. In the state government is the Lieutenant Governor. Mm -hmm. They are a vote. They are presiding over that House or that chamber. And so uh, in Georgia, if you the way you legislation starts is I had to go to legislative council first and make sure it is legal that we can do this. Can we put sidewalks inside the cafeteria? Uh -huh. No, we can't put sidewalks in the cafeteria. Yeah. Okay, well, they what, go against what, that. yeah, they're gonna go against that. But Sam, there's something we can do. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's get this worked out. Lawyers are gonna work better. They're gonna craft that legislation. Uh -huh. When they craft that legislation according to what I did, now we start presenting it on the floor. When she present it on the floor, it gets assigned to a committee. So if we're talking about sidewalks in schools, we're talking about something that's retaining the education yeah. or another subcommittee. And so that would get assigned to that. Now you got to get it out of the education committee, out of the House, and get it to the Senate. So it's so many things in these legislations. It got to go through so many hands and so many different layers mm. to get approved. That's why you got Democrats and Republicans, because we got our issues. They got their yeah. issues. They, and they, we're going to push our yeah. issues through. We're going to help get our issues right. through. It's crazy, but it's structured government, and we got to start paying attention to that. So we won't call the mayor and ask the mayor about laws when the legislature is like, like, This why mayor, you did question. The mayor is elected, uh, depend on the city government. In Atlanta, Atlanta has a mayor strong government, mm -hmm. meaning that the mayor has a lot of powers, too. But if you look at places like the city of South Fulton, they have a council strong government. So their mayor is almost sometimes reduced to a figurehead. Right. Because you got to go through council to get things done. Just and like so, I did that, you do they even have a mayor out there? And, uh, yeah, yeah. So they, got, so they have a mayor in Jonesboro, but they don't have a mayor for unincorporated Jonesboro. Uh -huh. So unincorporated Jonesboro is ran by the Clayton County Commissioners and the Clayton County Commission, which is the chair, and you got other commission members of the Clayton County Commission. See, with all that's this, confusing. I, that's confusing. That's what I was just about to say. But I can keep up with it because I be on it. But me thinking about like from a regular person, from a regular black man standpoint, I don't even want to be yeah, honest. because you got a city council and county commission, and you like, but they're doing the same thing, but they're eternal. And then as a state legislator, I don't have a boss. Like, I don't go back to the county and there's somebody who I answer to on my boss aside of the constituents. Mm -hmm. But we have a what you call a legislative delegation. So Clayton County will have seven legislators assigned to that area. And we're in charge of making sure that the local legislation and things that the county commission and the cities need, is it comes to us to go to the state right. for it to come back that way. Right. Roads, bridges, um, education, funding. Things like that. Mm -hmm. So, legislate. So, legislative House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Then under you is now you got in Georgia you got the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary of state, uh, speaker of the house. Then you got the House of Representatives and the Georgia State Senate. Okay, so the Georgia State Senate is responsible for what? <laughs> they the same thing. The same thing. And see, that's what I told you. See, you got to pay attention to Oh, so they, so they be yeah. twins of, your, of yours. Yeah, they, they, they're they your twins. Twin. But they... So you got to tell me the black time. Okay, all right. They twins. They yeah, twins. They, yeah. they twins. So everybody working together, but they're different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know... See, I'm so, trying to help the people understand. So that's, that's your you twins. Twin. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. twins. Yeah, we going to use like See, that. I work with the youngies, so... Yeah. Oh, they gonna be living so in this. If, if they call me twin on the on the as a court of legislature, I might not answer that. <laughs> but, but uh that that is the uh that is kind of like the case. What you represent me? What's up, twin? See, I told you, like, <laughs> yeah. okay, again, you gonna vote for me, ain't you? Yeah, no, one thousand yeah. other people for sure. For but uh the the like I said in the house, money bills start. Mm -hmm. No money is starting in the Senate. That's crazy because senators, they got all the money, but that's right. like no money bills start in the Senate. And then other bills can start in the Senate, but somebody has to carry it out of the House. So mm -hmm. one can't watch the other. The one can't do one without the other. And that's why they be saying this politics is usual because you got to be nice to these people, well, even if you don't like them. Because 
you might try to bring forth something that you need them to even even get with. This is what the cavalry will have to It's a hallway split in between the chambers. You got the House of Representatives on this side. You got the Senate on this side. Then in each of those chambers, you got the Republicans and you got the Democrats. And in each of those chambers, you got the Republicans and you got the Democrats. So you have all these people that are seemingly separated, but they got to work together. And that's my thing, too. When Georgia, we're in the minority. And so I can go down there all day and be like, I'm standing for just this, and I'll never be able to talk to the other side and get something done. And that's one of the things that my dad did to help get Marta back in Clayton County when right. he lost Marta. The accreditation and different things is because he had relationships with the other side, mm -hmm. and he wasn't afraid to talk to him. And they weren't afraid to talk to him. Mm -hmm. He got some really good appointment, committee appointments. He was uh, had appointments like education funding, uh, homeland security. So you remember when we was talking about everybody carrying guns or the police ain't enforcing guns in builders no more. It's got to be people that enforce right, it. Right, right, right. All that came through homeland and public security. Mm -hmm. So those are different committees that are going to regulate how we do problems. I and so you don't pay no attention. You just wait for somebody to tell you what the law is. For you to say you're breaking it or you're not breaking it. I don't think black people feel like our voice or our how we feel about the law matter. I don't that's, think that's you know crazy. that that black people make laws too though. And so if we can feel like that, that's because we always feel like we're on the receiving end of the law. Mm -hmm. I told you a few minutes ago, if you ain't on the table, I mean if you if you ain't if you ain't at the table, you're on the menu. Right. And so you can't understand something as long as you keep being moved around. And that's where we gotta start paying attention to these people that we are electing so that we know what they're doing. Yeah. Know who they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah you must, if, if you go to the church and you don't care that the preacher used to be a pimp, because you he's he's giving you salvation. He's mm -hmm. offering you a way to God. What's the difference from not saying that pimps should be legislators? I'm just saying. People shouldn't judge people from how their past right. lives are in terms of their transition to right. who they could be to the right. community. Because the people that's in these positions that you think are righteous got crazy skeletons in their clothes. Man, they, I ain't even going to say it. I yes, don't got myself in trouble. I ain't going to say it. Yeah, I don't got, got myself in trouble. Yeah, got crazy skeletons. I was about to say something. They got some crazy skeletons. They be doing some crazy stuff. And you like, I think uh, we were talking about that before about how people in power <laughs> have a little mental instability. Like Diddy. Yeah. I ain't saying that <laughs> I ain't been to no Diddy parties, <laughs> though. I ain't saying that. <laughs> man, you probably want to donate to the campaign. Yeah, right? man. It, it's open. Yeah. But uh, we, I want to know, we want to know exactly what it is you're going to bring to your district. What is it that you're going to do for your district? Because uh, I know you're going to carry on some of the things that your father implemented, you know what I mean, that you agree with. You know what I mean? But what you gonna bring? See, yourself. I'm glad you said that. That was yeah. important. Yeah. Because even though that's my father and we have so much in common, there is a junior and a senior. Mm. And so there are gonna be some things that we're gonna differ on. Uh, but one of the things that I wanna bring in is fresh energy. I wanna bring in some fresh ideas. Mm. I wanna bring in uh, me as an individual in my life experiences and unique that are unique to me. And tap into people that feel counted out. Tap into people that feel like that they don't have a shot or access. Access is huge. Oh, access yeah, is yeah. why I'm here. If my dad would have gave me access, he didn't pay me. Every other eight dollar there was getting paid. I right. didn't pay him now. He used to be like, man, like why? Yeah. Yeah, they pay. Now, uh, uh, 17 years later, I made <laughs> thousands of dollars off of what he taught me and him giving me that access. Well, you understand. I understand. And, and so I want to bring um, to the table is giving as many people opportunities and access as possible. You know, if somebody wants to come down there and shadow me and watch me at the Capitol mm -hmm. or learn or me introduce you to this, all you got to do is go mm -hmm. And I mean, person, you can walk through the door. They're going to turn around and walk out. They're going to go in and see the opportunity and make it happen. Right. And so if we don't open the door, we don't know. So I want to be that person that opens the door. I want to bring that type of uh, freshness and, and just... Who I am, just you know, not be afraid to be who I am. Man, that's beautiful, man. Uh, you also are a business owner. Yes. So tell us about your business and how you get into that. Well, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I am uh, one of the business owners of a uh, private armed security company, mm -hmm. as well as uh, private transportation. So we moving people in sprinters, vans, trucks, 
buses, real presidential car wars, look. Real presidential look. I had the luxury look. of yes. I had the luxury of enjoying it one day. And see, that's the good thing because I ain't got to go outsource none of that. I can right. look, look like the president as where I'm sitting. Man. And I, and I believe that you dress your part. You dress the part. And, and you can dump down the part. You can be like, I'm just a state rep. I'm going to go in here looking mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nah. I'm going here smelling good, look good, how about it? Hey, and I need protection. Yeah. So why well, you come in here with all the protection? They already wonder that's why you got into those businesses. But yeah. I mean I also enjoy it, man. I like providing a service. Um mm-hmm. I and, and big uh, me and all of my business partners are really big on protection. Mm-hmm. We're protectors of our family. So we want to be protectors of the community. And so security gives us the opportunity to do that. And it gives us an opportunity to do that without Stigmatization, I guess, that some police carry or or, or or whatever in terms of giving us, say, just a little bit closer touch and reach to try to support them, of course. Mm-hmm. But we also, it gives us a little bit of touch and reach because, hey, look, man, I ain't the police. I ain't trying to mess you up. I'm just trying to direct you and let right. you be right. You, so you provide, and it's beautiful too, by the way, what you just said, but you provide armored cars and the security guards Yes. And the drivers. Yeah. Well, not armored car, armed drivers. And, you know, we, but we can provide them. If you want an armored car, we got an armored car. Yeah, so don't say not if armored you want the good car. car. We got the good car. Don't car. say not <laughs> armored car. Yeah, we got the armored car. It ain't legal. It's the best thing to have armored car. It's politics, though. You know, if I say one thing and they go back and say, oh, man, you said you had a tank in the backyard. I said, no, I knew a person with a tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the side of the yard. Now, you come to a now and you want an armored car. Yeah. An armored truck, now I ain't gonna say car, armored truck with a full detailed security. I done experienced and I was presidential. Literally. Yes, sir. Go to this man right here and hey, tell him the name of the business. Uh the, the names of our businesses are Global Protection Syndicate, which is a consultant part of the Armored Security Company, mm-hmm. uh Kinetic Protection Group, which is our actual security providers. Um uh, Palladium Event Management, which handles all of our logistics, billing, and uh, transportation as well as global transportation services. How do you get into that? I mean, how do you, you get know, into security? I think I'm entrepreneurial. And them, man. them names, them names you just named sound like worldwide security. That's why. That's why when our parents name us, you know, like, that's ain't like you ain't, when your parents name you, you want to be able to have a name that you can walk in any room. In. Right, right. And right. so that was one of the things that we were talking about. Uh, even one of my past businesses was the Atlanta Production Factory, but it was associated with what the business was, and then we tried to give it a, a round to identify with Atlanta, but still make it transcend. So yes. with Global Protection Syndicate, um, of course, you got Global and Protection, and we wanted to go with some outside group. So we knew that we were a conglomerate, so we wanted it's to get it. It got, just it got like, a ring like that. Do, do. A day <laughs> So I get plans and, then, right there. and then with uh, Palladium Event Management, Palladium is the strongest metal that you're going to get out there. It's stronger mm-hmm. than gold, it's stronger than platinum. And so when you think about a brain, you want to think about strength. And you want to think about, uh, you know, the ability to be able to go in any situation. Right. And so that's what we want to transcend our brains. We don't want them to identify with, oh, there's just some black guys or this is these guys. We want to identify from a uh, Worldwide perspective or global perspective, and a perspective that where we can be able to walk in any room and be able to support and service anybody. It's beautiful, man. I love that. I love what you're doing for your district and for the whole everything. What you what you touch, you know what I mean. And you 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 this your this your campaign get right here, and I got a good feeling about it. I don't know how you, we gonna get together with with, with this campaign and canvases, and we gonna make it a big deal of necessary smoke. And we're going to blast it out. Anything so, you want to let the people know? Yes. So the election is May the 21st. Mm-hmm. That is the most important day. That's May 21st. 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 And uh, Hold up. May 21st. May 21st. All right. We got a couple other big dates in between. Like we'll have some fundraisers. We even... Uh, going to be qualifying at the Capitol officially. That's why we want everybody to come to the Capitol with us uh, between the, uh, the days of March the 4th through March the 7th. I haven't decided which day we're going to go, mm-hmm. but whichever day we go, we want to be able to have a visit, uh, uh, a visibility. And normally, when we're down there, everybody's down there. Like last time I was qualifying, Senator Warnock was there, Senator Alsa was there, uh, all of your 
all of the people that you see on TV, all of them are there. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, when you're in those spaces, they're a lot humble. And that, and then you as a as a as a business owner, as a podcaster, as a, a constituent, as a community advocate, as a person who cares about your community, that's when you hold the power. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't hold the power. You hold the power. If you go down there, and, and, and one of the reasons, one of the things that made me dangerous as a political consultant is I got you elected, I can get you on elected. That's because we had the people. We helped them get to the people. And okay, I'm going to get somebody else to get to the people right. if you don't want to do it right. And so that's the situation, same situation as constituents. We've got to realize our power and say, you know what? You can sit right and act like this all you want, but every two years, you got to come up for re-election. Um, and if you're going to stand on this, we're going to make sure you stand on it when it's time to be in the public. Right. And that's just that's simple as, as it goes. And uh, also, the, the website. MikeBlantonJr.com 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 And get any information. You can volunteer the phone bank, canvas, uh, donate, especially donate. We want with donations. Campaigns do not um, strive without donations. Right. I know that I donate to the Democratic Party and to presidential elections, and I get 1,000 plus 1 million emails mm-hmm. all the time. I ain't going to send you that many emails like that. But that's how serious donating to campaigns is because yeah. they don't strive without uh, being able to take care of the things you got to take care of in the campaign. And we're pretty transparent on what uh, programs and itemized things that we need. So people have resources and they can't donate money. You can donate resources. Yeah, hear yeah. That's even bigger. Go to the website, MikeGlantonJr.com. Make sure you donate. All donations are welcome. You know what I mean? And I just got to ask you a smoke question before we leave. How you feel about Donald Trump? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you, mean, you want me to do the YG version? However you oh, want to no, do it. No, no, no. However you want to do it. How you feel about Donald? Uh, uh, I, I think that the democratic process really got to be played out this time. I, I think that people shouldn't go on the uh, polls with